Talbot. Pam is your chef for tonight, and we have all sorts of great things coming up for you. But first, we want to go straight to the chef to tell us what we need to be getting ready right now. This is so exciting. We've been talking about doing a sheet pan dinner for a long time, all the rage for all the right reasons. We'll talk about that in a moment, but the key is the sheet pan and not just a sheet pan, but a really hot sheet pan. So we posted a, about 10 minutes ago to make sure your oven was on 450. If you didn't see that right now, get over there, get in there and make sure that that oven is nice and hot and ideally, you might want to go ahead and put your sheet pan in. Why? We'll talk about that in just a moment. And the key with sheet pan dinners is you want to be cooking um, according to the need of the particular ingredient. Okay. So we're making an absolute knock your socks off with flavor dish that's kind of reminiscent of a tuna nichoa, mm -hmm. but it's a roasted vegetable nichoa. Our oven's ready. It's ready. By the way. I it's know. ready, yes. yes. Um, we're instead of using tuna though, we're gonna be using a beautiful cod. And in the recipe we talked about cod, any fish, salmon, halibut, or chicken if you so desired. And you know, we'll talk about that in just a minute as well. If you don't have that out of the refrigerator, get that out now because you want everything to be kind of at the same temperature when you actually get it into the oven. The oven is hot, so we're gonna go ahead and get the first ingredient that takes the longest to cook in, which is the potato. Okay. Now, these are little potatoes, so they're not gonna really take that long. If you went with a Yukon Gold or one that's a little bit larger, it might take a little bit longer. We talk in the recipe about 18 minutes, but these will probably cook in more like 13 to 15, but that means we need to get them in. Okay, now so, are these a special type of potato? Um, these are baby potatoes. Baby potatoes. Yeah, and okay. um, these are baby red potatoes. Okay. Um, I like that because the color, you can also buy the multicolored ones that even have some of the purple Peruvians, the Yukon Gold, you can buy the baby fingerling potatoes, or if they're larger potatoes, just cut them into quarters. And we that was what that my question was. So if they bought a bag of potatoes mm -hmm. that maybe isn't this teeny tiny, mm -hmm. um, they should cut them in quarters so that they will cook about the same. Exactly, and you can see the size okay. that we're cutting them into, just kind of bite-sized pieces okay. because that's what this is. It's not just easy to cook, but it's also easy to eat. I'm using a really beautiful knife. You want to talk to us about that? I do. We did a um, we did a class in January, and the giveaway that Cutco um, enabled for us was a French chef knife, and um, people were just wanting that knife. They wanted that knife. They wanted that knife. They were a little and competitive. A little bit, but it was great to see so many people understanding how great a really good chef's knife can be and how important it is for making a delicious meal. So Cutco um, said that we could do the petite French chef for this meal, thinking that it's just perfect for what we're doing, these small cuts and getting the veggies all done. So um, we will be telling you a little bit more about that giveaway in just a minute. Since you're already rolling, mm -hmm. I do just wanna say, if you're following along, um, you can get in the files tab of the cooking club group your recipe with your prep sheet and grocery list if you haven't printed that out yet so that in case technology is not our friend you have it ready you can go off of it i'm going to go grab the nicole can right and get right up because you are making some great things and i don't want to uh, i know and probably haven't been able to see all those great little cuts that i was doing with this which with slicing through these little potatoes like butter. So the Nicole Cam means that she's gonna get up close and personal. You'll still be able to hear her. And do we want to introduce our Spice Boy tonight that's gonna to be taking questions? I think we must, and we'll get to hear his voice and see his name, and that is Zach Talbot, and he is our Spice Guy, being our moderator for the night. So Zach, thank you. Um, if you're watching, you have any questions, just type them out for Pam. She will answer them live. Um, and I know I'm already on the Nicole cam, but I cannot imagine us going a moment further without a toast to the night. Would oh you like goodness. to tell us what we yes, should be drinking? Absolutely. Well, we have in Pam's picks a couple of wine suggestions. One was a beautiful rosé from the south of France. Why? Well, remember I said this is kind of reminiscent of a tuna nichoa. Well, nichoa meaning 
it was kind of originated in Nice, France, in that beautiful, beautiful um, Mediterranean. And so with that, also having a wine from there really makes magic happen. It's a light, beautiful rosé. It kind of reminds us of summer. And those of you that are still experiencing some cold, um, it'll give you some dreams of summer ahead. We're cooking with our Caribbean kitchen, which is also very similar to that kind of south of France flavor. So the wine just works really beautifully. Another choice could be Pinot Gris. Um, anything that you love actually is kind of a perfect pairing with this, but since we don't get to toast, I'm going to toast to you that are watching right now. Hopefully you have a glass of something in hand. Cheers. And we're loving calling mm. this group cooking because we know that you're at your house cooking right now while you watch, we hope you are. And we're cooking here so that at the end of the night, we can all pause and even though we're in our separate kitchens, know that we've cooked together and now we're eating together. Yes, plating together, all of the above. So with that, we also need to get the food in the oven so it can start. Ours is heated, hopefully yours is too. You can see that I have the potatoes cut into kind of, again, those bite-sized pieces. The bigger the potato, the more cuts you need to do. And I'm adding to it what could be a pretty interesting ingredient for you, maybe one you've never thought about roasting, and that's artichoke hearts. Um, they're, again, packed in oil. You wanna drain those before you do. Not everyone has the opportunity to have a bowl that says artichokes have big hearts, but my birthday was yesterday and my daughter, the one who is on the Nicole cam, brought this very thing to me and I'm loving it because the spoon also says all choked up. So it's pretty cute. That's we're, all there is to it. We're ready for artichokes. We are hearts. ready. That's and all there is to it. And this is kind of a star of this dish. It really is. If you've never had roasted artichoke hearts, prepare yourself to become addicted because something magical happens to them when you roast them. We've had artichoke hearts to, again, use as a little dipper. We've had them in dips themselves, but there's something about the roasting that is just amazing. And we're gonna just toss those together with the potatoes, do a little bit of seasoning. This is where the Caribbean kitchen comes in, which is kind of a bronzing spice. It's what we call it. And you're gonna add to this about a tablespoon of that seasoning. Get it nice and tossed together and a little bit of oil. I'm gonna give you, once we get going here, some rules for sheet pan cooking, but you really do need to kind of have things bathed in a little bit of oil. And again, that was about a tablespoon and a half. You wanna to toss that with the spice and a little gentle toss. You're not wanting to break those artichoke hearts up because again, the magic is when they're able to roast in that beautiful whole form. Toss that, cover it with the spice and the oil, and then go into your oven for where you see the ability to things happen. Are you ready, Nicole? I'm Let's ready. move in. Again, there's that magical sheet pan that has been heating up. We want it heating because we want something to happen when these potatoes and artichokes hit. And that is we want to hear just that noise. We want to hear that sizzle. And we want to hear that because it's what's going to begin not just to cook the artichokes and the potatoes, but also begin to caramelize it, which means you're gonna get all of those great flavors coming out in it. I'm gonna put it on a third of the pan because soon we're gonna be adding our green beans and tomatoes, and then soon after that, we'll be adding the fish that we're gonna be doing. So, okay, so let that go. Okay, so one sheet pan, but we're just using a third of it right, right now. And you could, you could, if you wanted to, you know, move it out and let it kind of have its magic. The key with, with um, trying to get that caramelized flavor is you're wanting to let it have lots of space. You don't want it to all steam together. So okay. that's why you could get by with a smaller sheet pan, but the bigger one really makes the difference. And it's interesting because it seems logical that one of the most important parts of sheet pan cooking is the sheet pan. Um, you notice that that one has about an inch rim to it. You wanna be able to contain it. You don't want it to be like a classic cookie sheet where things are sliding off. You want it to be contained. You want it to be heavy um, so that it can really stand up to the heat and works really nicely. So that's rule one is 
get a good sheet pan. Again, make it bigger, even if you're not making that big of a meal, you think, well, I could just get a really small one. Again, the more the room, the better. You don't want to crowd the food. The second kind of guidance, or we could call it a rule, don't like rules, but we could call it that, is to make sure that you think about your ingredients and what's gonna take the longest to cook and get that in first. So in this case, it was the potatoes. What will follow will be the green beans and the tomatoes. Those won't take long at all. And because we did fish, won't take long at all. If you were doing chicken, you might wanna put those in at the same time as the green beans and the tomatoes. It's always thinking through the timing. And then the third, bit of guidance is to make sure that you have the seasoning and that you have that little bit of olive oil on it so that you really get that ability to crisp and brown right along with it. So good to go. It's one sheet pan, which means you're not messing up a lot. It's the first time ever we've done a Facebook Live that I've not used the induction cooktop that I love because the oven is kind of doing the job for me. Um, it's also kind of a one pan in one bowl meal because the same exact bowl that I used to toss the potatoes and the artichokes in is also the bowl that I'm gonna toss the green beans and the tomatoes in. So it's a similar kind of process. Any vegetable can work with this. If you have asparagus and it's so beautifully in season right now, asparagus would work beautifully. Um, if you have um, haricot vert, which is a baby French green bean, that's beautiful in this. I had the opportunity to get some beautiful Florida green beans and they just look so great. I went ahead and used those. Um, I'm gonna add some Nishwa olives to this as well. Again, not necessary if you're not an olive fan. There's somebody behind the camera that isn't a big olive fan. So always the question, could I leave them out? You can, but I cut them just in half so they can also be kind of wandered through. Remember, this is all gonna be served on a plate or a platter, so you can kind of pick it as you would like. Those are cut in half and added to this as well, and then some garlic. And you can go big or go home, my classic statement. Um, instead of a, a mince of garlic, which I would do if I was sauteing, instead I've just sliced the garlic. Um, why? Because I wanna have that bite to the garlic. It's gonna roast, and it's gonna roast beautifully, tossed together with this, four cloves of garlic, which is, Again, a heavy statement there. So again, you can leave it just at that or can certainly go a little bit lighter or leave it out altogether. Um, people always ask me if they're not a garlic fan, is there something to use in its place? Shallots are really a beautiful, almost cross between an onion and a garlic. And I would do a similar thing, except instead of that thin shave, I would probably cut those more into slices and kind of sprinkle that over this, this mixture. Just like we did with the potatoes, we want to drizzle it with just a little touch of that olive oil. Similarly, we're going to add some of our Caribbean spice to it, our Caribbean kitchen, which has more ingredients than any of our spice blends, right, Nicole? Oh, it does. It's got all the goods and can really be taken so many different ways. You know, I use it as that bronzing blend that you talked about, whether I'm doing a um, kind of a blackened burger, mm -hmm. but with a little less heat. Right. Blackened burger or fish, but I even put it in my pasta sauce. Mm -hmm. it's, there's just something about all the herbs that are in it, but that kind of secret ingredient that's in it, the, the thing that kind of sets it apart from other blends is mustard. Mustard, and a dry just, mustard. A dry mustard, organic. Do you want to tell us a little bit about what mustard does for us? Well, again, it's one of the things, if you've been into a little deeper look at some of our spice blends, it's, they're not just about flavor. It is about flavoring the food, P.S. Don't forget the flavor, but it's also about giving wellness to food. Each one of the blends is loaded with spices and herbs that make the healthy difference. Mustard is a really interesting one because, you know, you think, well, Gosh, you think of the mustard that comes in, in, the, in the little container, you think of grape upon. But dry mustard, which is the essential ingredient in those, um, works as an antiseptic in the body. It works, believe it or not, as a digestive aid. And very similar to turmeric, works as an anti-inflammatory. Cultures around the world use mustard 
whole seeds and actually put some heat on them. Um, Indian cuisine actually fries the mustard seeds. We're using ground mustard seed um, that just again enlivens the whole flavor, but then together with the cayenne and, and, and the basil and all the different herbs that are in it, you're getting more than just that single wellness function. You're literally getting medicine in a bottle that, that gets you well, that keeps you well, and certainly makes your food taste amazing, which is what it's all about. So we've got those all spiced and ready to go. Meanwhile, that's kind of cooking away the potatoes that are doing their magic. Um, I talked about the rules of sheet pans, the guidance, if you will. We talked about the need to have the larger sheet pan, give it room to breathe. Talked about the need to get the oil, to get the spices in, to get your timing in play. You also want to think about um, how to be able to maybe even layer. Um, if I was cooking a um, piece of pork or cooking a piece of beef in this particular dish. I might even use a um, cooling rack, like a cookie cooling rack, to be able to put it on top of the vegetables so that while it's cooking, it's also doing its own kind of flavoring but not steaming that piece of beef or steaming that pork chop. Because we're using fish, not necessary. And sometimes you can even, even though it's a sheet pan meal, it's supposed to be all in one, you can also get the little added edge by pan searing it before you put it onto the sheet pan, particularly with proteins. Again, not gonna do that today because the citrus spice, um, which we're gonna use on our cod, when it hits that sheet pan, that caramelization takes place. It's almost like a hot saute pan. But if I was doing, again, particularly a little heartier meat, like a pork chop or a piece of steak, I would probably sear it first, then get it into the oven. Fish or chicken, you're pretty good with. Only thing you wanna make sure you're doing if you have chicken, and I had this in the recipe directions, is if you're doing chicken and it's a pretty thick breast, cut it in half, butterfly it as it's called, open that up so that it's an even cooking surface. Otherwise, you end up getting the end of the chicken cooked a little earlier and the other part taking a really long time to really do what it needs to do. And would you suggest that anytime you're baking chicken? Um, not anytime you're baking chicken. A lot depends on the size of the chicken. Um, and if you're doing it by itself, mm -hmm. you've got a little bit more latitude with it. But because we're cooking it with a lot of other things and you don't want to keep it in that long, um, that's where the butterfly makes sense. Same with pork chops. Awesome. So let's go over and see how our magic is working. Oh my gosh. So this is where we always wish that we had smell-o-vision, right? Oh, absolutely. So and I, I love how you called it, um, when we were prepping for the class, you called it just a humble sheet pan. Because mm -hmm. it really is doing all the magic, but it's just a sheet pan. It's just a sheet pan, but oh my gosh. And again, it doesn't feel like you can really pick up too many magazines without reading something about a sheet pan dinner. So we thought we had to be cool and do one too. Absolutely. So you might have seen what I did there. I just used the end of my spatula to just go into the potato and see if it would give a little give, and it did. So that tells me that it still, yes, has some cooking to do, but I'm going to go ahead and push that over to a side, and then I'm gonna add the green beans and the tomatoes. Also notice the metal spatula that I'm using. I love, love, love using plastic spatulas because when we're cooking, and particularly on Facebook Live, it, doesn't make so much noise, but you really need that metal spatula to be able to scrape um, from the pan in the way that we're wanting to do. So don't worry about hurting the pan. Sheet pans are not nonstick. Um, and you may even think about, this is a little bit of cleanup action, you may even think about using a parchment, very thick parchment paper on the underside of this which really does help with cleanup in a very big way. Yeah, I love this meal because it's such a focus on mm -hmm. eating and enjoying, but not having huge amounts of cleanup Oh, afterwards. I know. Well, not a huge amount of cleanup and not a huge amount of prep. Yeah. It's really a beautiful thing. How about the color of that? Beautiful. Which brings me to another little bit of guidance that goes with sheet pan meals. Think 
about color. Again, when we're doing a whole meal, and you think about what you're gonna put together with your dish, you, you tend to think about color. You don't wanna have a piece of white fish with white cauliflower and white rice. We eat with our eyes. That whole notion of color, it's culinary. It's being able to really give that excitement to the plate. Well, because all of this is being cooked together, you wanna to think that through. Um, again, I added tomatoes to this because I wanted that real pop of red color. I used the green beans. Thinking about how you're gonna really bring out the best of color, especially if you're gonna be using a fish like we're gonna be doing, which with a citrus spice isn't gonna have a lot of color in and of itself. So works out really nicely. And speaking of fish, time to start working on that. And as I mentioned, we did cod. Um, I'm gonna have it cut in about five to six ounce pieces raw, um, which means you get about a pound and a quarter. Um, again, same thing would apply with any fish that you might use. And we've done ex this exact same meal with salmon. It's delicious. We've done this exact same meal with a lot of different fishes and with chicken, and it works out nicely. Okay, so uh, if they were doing chicken, mm -hmm. they would have just about the same thing in mm -hmm. front of them except it would be a butterfly piece of chicken. Exactly, because it takes a little bit longer to cook, which means that the thickness would be the same here, but it would just be a little wider piece okay. instead. Great. So with this, I'm gonna um, just drizzle a little touch of olive oil to the top of this. Wouldn't necessarily do that if I was gonna be doing this in a pan, I would put some olive oil in the pan but because this is going onto the sheet pan, we're gonna be adding that little bit of olive oil to the fish. And then we're gonna be adding our citrus spice. If you've not had an opportunity to try the PS Flavor Citrus Spice, arguably many people's favorite, favorite spice blend. It's a beautiful blending of lemon and lime, pure essence of it with ginger and coriander and cumin. Um, has time. It's just absolutely delicious and we think will make all of the flavor just really stand out in this dish because generally a, a nishwa salad would have a good amount of citrus to it. It tends to bring it out. The citrus is what you'll oftentimes have as a citrus vinaigrette, maybe a champagne vinaigrette with some citrus in it. And you see what I'm doing is just using it, in this case, as a rub. And it's one of the questions we probably get the most is how do you know you've used enough? Well, you know you've used enough where you really can't see the flesh of the fish or the chicken or the pork or whatever you might be using. You really wanna get a good crusting, if you will, of that on the top of the fish. And it's gonna be on the top um, because what we're gonna do is first put it into the hot sheet pan let it do that little bit of a sizzle factor. Then we're gonna do a nice little flip of it. And what that's gonna do is let us have the pretty part, you know, at the top of it. So we're ready to go back in? Yeah, and while you're doing that, mm -hmm. um, I did wanna say that if anybody is running low on citrus spice or Caribbean kitchen, you can get both on the uh, website at psflavor.com, PS for Pam Smith, or PS Don't Forget the Flavor. So you see all of this is just working its oh magic. Oh my gosh, the colors. Are so gorgeous, right? And so again, the green beans and the tomatoes have had a chance to start to cook. You can see that garlic is starting to turn a great color. And as I mentioned, we wanna get this right onto the dish. Get that, that spice side down first. Beautiful. Then we'll sprinkle just the rest of what it calls for right on top of it. Okay, so you actually put it into mm -hmm. uh, onto the sheet pan mm -hmm. and then um, finish the other side. Right. Lovely, right? Yes. And while you're doing that, it looks like we have a question. And that question is? Uh, this question comes from Melissa, and she wants to know uh, if you wanted to bread the fish, would you recommend it? Or would you just stick with the, the citrus spice? Oh, such a great question. And actually, you could use a breading, and then you could also put um, one of the spice blends in with the breading itself. But remember a few minutes ago, I talked about 
having a rack potentially in the on top of the sheet pan if you're breading you, you really want to lift it up you want to get that breaded chicken or breaded fish out of the vegetable stew because otherwise that breading is just going to turn to kind of a mush you're not going to get that crispiness but if instead you put that sheet pan um, the little baking rack that is a cooling rack if you will that lets air circulate around it it lifts it up and it gives that kind of crispiness and really is delicious great breading is to use a panko breadcrumb panko is a japanese breadcrumb that's um, very um, very crispy and dry, different than an Italian breadcrumb. It has texture um, and it's just amazing, mixed with a spice blend. Um, one of my favorite ones is panko with a little bit of our Creole kitchen um, and a little bit of Parmesan cheese. It's a kind of perfect little blending. Mm, so, that is all a good. perfect little blending. Uh, I know, right it sounds great, right? Okay, so we're all good to go. We've got that cooking. It's gonna cook relatively quickly. Um, the fish itself will cook in about eight minutes. Um, if it's chicken, it's gonna take about 12 minutes. So we've got a little bit of time, but we've got something to do while we're waiting for that. And that is, we wanna make a little bit of a sauce to go with it. And this is in your recipe as well. Probably one of the simplest sauce if you were in the south of France and having this dish as the nichois that it was in, originally intended to be, more than likely it would be served with an aioli. And you can make your own aiolis. They're beautiful. Aioli is just a very French word for what we call mayonnaise, but it's done in a really flavorful, beautiful way. Um, I'm using mayonnaise as the base, but I love to use an olive oil mayonnaise. Um, it's you know just an off-the-shelf one, um, like a Hellman's or a Kraft olive oil mayonnaise. It's a lighter mayonnaise um, by design, but it's not a fat-free mayonnaise. It's instead whipped with that olive oil, so it ends up having a little less fat, a little less calories, but that's not why I use it. I just love the flavor that's in it. Um, that mayonnaise is gonna be the base, and then to that, I'm gonna add some coarse grain mustard. This is bringing in one more layer of a mustard. Coarse grain would be like a grape upon or um, any of your regular store brands, but again, with just a little bit of texture to it. And it just makes the aioli not only beautiful, but just really gives a bite with it. With the coarse grain, you're getting that mustard seed cracked but you're not getting it in a powdered form. Also use capers in this dish. And the key with capers is you want to rinse them well. Capers are very, very high in sodium because they're in a brine. Um, but not only do you want to rinse them, dry them, you also wanna run your knife through them just to give them a little bit of a chop. Um, capers are pretty wonderful just like we talked about um, that in many cultures they actually cook the mustard seeds whole mustard seeds in oil similarly all through france you'll oftentimes find capers that are cooked in oil as well it's almost frying the caper and the little caper berry tends to open up then get that added right in. And if somebody is just dying to type and ask Zach a question, what if you don't have capers? It is absolutely fine to leave those capers out, but they really do provide a very unique kind of flavor. Is there anything you would use instead? Or really, if you don't have capers, just leave them out? Yeah, I would probably add more garlic to this. We don't have any garlic. Um, we're letting the capers kind of carry it. Um, where a lot of the flavor is gonna come from in this is the lemon. And, and I was very happy to be able to find some Meyer lemons at the store. So that's what we're gonna be using in this. If you didn't find Meyer lemons or didn't want to pay the price of those Meyer lemons, understandable. Traditional lemons are fine. 
Um, they, Meyer lemons are almost a cross between a navel orange and a lemon. They're sweeter, they're very juicy. They just have a lot going for them. You almost think navel orange more than you think lemon. Um, we're gonna use not only the, the zest of the Meyer lemon, but we're also gonna be using some of the juice. And what I was able to do with these is microwave them. This is not a you know, crazy new hack. If you've ever been in one of our cooking classes, I talk about it all the time. I microwave the lemons, the limes, the, the citrus that we use for just 30 seconds. My gosh, can you believe how fragrant I, that is? It's unbelievable in that I'm interrupting because what you said about it being almost a combination between lemon and orange, you pick both of those scents up. You really do. It's, it's wow. pretty amazing, right? And so you microwaved it for how long? 30 seconds. 30 seconds. And it's just enough to burst those lemon cells um, inside so you get much more of the juice released from it. You wanna always zest it before you cut into it, but you are not gonna believe it when you see the juice that comes from this. Um, you could either just squeeze it, or if you have a handy citrus squeezer, look at this. It's oh just, goodness. again, like squeezing an orange, right? It mm -hmm. just absolutely comes right forth. We're gonna use both halves of that. And what a great way to use the whole lemon. Mm-hmm. Yeah, if you're using zest, don't feel like you're needing to zest it and then throw that lemon away. Um, most kitchens, commercial kitchens you go into, will have a refrigerator filled with zested lemons, zested limes, and then they use the lemon or lime for their juice when they're ready to do just that. Oh, right. Really, really nice. So we're gonna give um, just a little taste of that. I'm gonna add some fresh herbs to it too. Whoops. Oh, wow. Delicious. Best you've ever made. Well, it's it's good. There's no doubt about it. <laughs> um, you could add a little bit of Caribbean Kitchen to it if you want to. You can let that be kind of be your guide. There's so much flavor that's already in it from the mustard and from the lemon that you're probably good to go. But if you want to add just a little bit more of that, that's fine to do. And then some fresh herbs. I'm using cilantro in this because I really want to bring out, we're using citrus spice, and I mentioned that citrus spice has coriander in it. Coriander is the seed of cilantro. So if you're not a fan of cilantro, the truth is you may love coriander. It's a completely different um, experience altogether. If you don't like, like cilantro at all, fine to use a flat leaf parsley or even a basil in this. And before you keep going, because I would mm -hmm. like to show what you're doing, but before we get too far away from Meyer lemon, yes, we have a question from Kylie. Okay. Of whether they would be good in lemonade. Oh my gosh, Meyer lemon lemonade, Kylie would be so delicious. Because think about it, oftentimes you're needing to use a lot of sugar when you're making fresh lemonade to take away some of that tartness of a lemon. But because Meyer lemons are so sweet, you actually can use less sugar because you're getting more flavor from the Meyer lemon. Wow. Awesome, awesome question. Great question. I think that's something you need to try in the next couple of weeks. Yes. And okay, so, so question. I watched you before you started mm -hmm. chopping with this kind of bunch of cilantro. Mm -hmm. You almost rolled it mm -hmm. before you chopped. Can yeah. you show us what you yeah, did? Yeah, let me do this on this side um, because I'm not really wanting to get a lot of the stems. Um, I tend to let the stems kind of be at the base, but then I take all of that group of the leaves of the cilantro, kind of do a nice little tight roll, and then I just let my knife go right through it. With, and it's again a beautiful knife for mm -hmm. doing just that. As you know from past classes, I also love to use um, the beautiful um, shears um, to be able to just snip herbs. But because this is gonna be a pretty good amount that we're using in this, what I'm doing instead is just letting my knife cut through it. You see, and you're just kind of rocking back I'm and forth. I'm rocking it, right. I'm holding it and rocking it. I'm not wanting to kill the cilantro and leave it all over my beautiful cutting board. But instead, 
just wanting to do a nice little mince. And if you're just tuning in and wondering what in the world could this knife be, this is the Petite French Chef Knife from Cutco. And um, we have posted on the Facebook page how you could win one of these. That's fantastic. And how do you win it? So after you make your meal, you'll want to post a picture. And that'll be by the end of March. So if you're watching this later, later, you may miss that one. But there's probably a giveaway right around the corner. Um, but if you post your picture by the end of March of your meal, of whatever your meal comes out as, and we want you to be proud of it, um, you can post a picture of it and you'll get an entry. And if you post a picture with a bag or jar of your citrus spice in the background, you'll get a second entry. Oh my goodness, fantastic. Oh mom, that so, just looks amazing. Doesn't it? Um, it well, that's a nice lab noise. Um, it really just is one of those great kinds of of sauces that you can use in a variety of ways. We're going to, because I'm gonna serve this um, almost platter style, um, I'm gonna use it just on the plate, but I put this out because you can also put the sauce right into a handy squeeze bottle. Notice I've cut the top of this off somewhat so that you get a little more. I've got the herbs in it, and, and if it's a, a too thin of an opening, you don't get that good flow. But you can fill this and literally just paint the top of your fish or paint the top of your dish or paint the plate, but you've got a little more control when it's in this kind of form. And that's really one of those restaurant hacks that yeah. I, you know, that we all have learned from you. How do they make their plates look so great? Well, they use things like a squeeze bottle. Exactly. To just squeeze it out and really make it like a, um, uh, a painting. To, that's exactly it. And it just gives a little more control with it and just gives the flavor and everything is beautiful. Speaking of beautiful, we should also check and see how our halibut, our halibut, listen, that our cod is going. And oh, it is going. Oh, it is. It looks so great. Doesn't it? Wow. Look at how it's browning, almost like it's glazing on the it top. It really does do exactly that because the citrus spice has a little bit of turbinado, sugar in the raw. It works with the heat to give that, again, beautiful caramelization. And just is so great. So I'm going to do a little test here. Our potatoes are done. Look how beautiful the artichokes are. We've got the little action going with the green beans. And how did you know the potatoes were done? You used your spatula? Yeah, and... to just go right into it. Okay. I'm not doing it well there because it keeps moving but on me, but it goes in. Trust me, here we go. Oh, we'll there. go with that one. Perfect. See? And so that's my sign that it's really done and doing just what it needs to do. Okay, great. So perfect. I think we're ready to go. The fish, the way you know it's ready, is you can do a variety of things. You can use your handy thermometer, mm -hmm. and that will tell you, but you can also do a little press test. Press test means that you literally just touch the top of it, and if it springs back to touch, rather than staying um, depressed, um, that's a sign that it's cooked for you, and it'll have some carryover cooking as well. Okay, because we do not a, want depressed fish. We do not want depressed <laughs> fish in any way, shape, or form. Now, if um, if they're doing chicken, yes, they probably need a little more time. Yeah, now, definitely. If their potatoes and artichokes and green beans are done, but their chicken needs more time, is everything else going to be okay waiting? It will. Okay, it will. so just it's, leave yeah. it all. You're not going to be in any trouble with it at all. And if you don't have a digital thermometer, always a great thing to do because it tells you exactly that you're in a safe kind of zone. And so this is already up to 140 degrees. So by the time we pull it out, it'll get some carryover cooking and we'll be serving it right around one. 145, 150, which is okay. what I'm wanting for the fish. Okay. With chicken, you do want to go longer. Mm -hmm. So with chicken, you want to pull it out at about 155, which means it will, with carryover cooking, will cook to about 165. Okay. Which okay, is so let's goal. say that one more time. So with the fish, mm -hmm. we want to pull it out around 140, mm -hmm. and it'll carry over cook to about 145, 150. Right. But if it's fish, 
Or we want to leave it into one. Chicken. I mean, if it's chicken, we want to leave it into 150, 155, which means it will cook carry over to 160, 165, Fantastic. which is safe for poultry. And we have our sheet pan dinner. How's wow. that for beautiful, right? It's just gorgeous. You're right. You know, when you talked about those guidelines, not rules, but mm -hmm. guidelines, and color. Color made all the difference. It makes I mean, all not just the color, difference. but I see so many textures and flavors and I love how you used the citrus spice and the Caribbean kitchen mm -hmm. instead of just sticking Well, to because the, one. the two go so beautifully together. One just is so perfect with the protein and the other becomes almost the salt and pepper to the potatoes and the green beans and the tomatoes. Again, that's what our kitchen spices are really about. Creole kitchen, adobo kitchen, Caribbean kitchen. It's a salt and pepper replacement. Notice, no salt, no mm. pepper in this entire dish because I was able to use that Caribbean kitchen that flavored the vegetables as compared to just salting or peppering them. That's wonderful. A little bit different. So we're all good to go. And I think all we want to do now is just get it onto a plate. <laughs> Got Melissa just added that Caribbean kitchen is in everything she makes. It's a real problem. It's a real problem. <laughs> well, or, or a solution. I would, a solution <laughs> to a problem. Some people call it a problem. I call it a solution. <laughs> so a couple of ways you can do. You could obviously put this onto a single plate and do a little mound of the green beans and tomatoes, a little mound of the potatoes, and then maybe rest the fish atop it. If you're serving it more platter style, which this is kind of called for, there's really two things you can do. Really, the first thing I would do is consider just bringing this whole sheet pan to the table. Mm. Don't even mess with trying to get it off. That's what a one pan dinner is all about. And again, it's a humble sheet pan, but it's beautiful. I don't know that we could have a better serving vehicle than just the sheet pan itself. So put some nice hot pads on your table. Um, you know, make sure you warn people about diving in, but just a really beautiful way. If you do decide, however, that you want to plate it, which is what we'll do here, I love a nice um, rectangle kind of a, of a dish just like this. So you're still plating it family style. Uh -huh. Okay. So again, if you're having a dinner party or maybe you've got little ones at the dinner table that you're a little worried about a hot pan, certainly can do the transfer, but just not necessary. Would you try to look at how delicious those artichokes look? I mean, they're just so delectable, wow. no words for it. And notice what I'm doing. I'm doing a little bit of a striation here, almost the way it was in the pan itself where I'm adding the potatoes and then I'm bringing the green beans and the tomatoes right together. But in this case, I'm gonna take a little bit further down because I want to use these as a bed for the fish itself. Okay. So about a third of the way with the potatoes and then about two thirds of the way with the green beans and the tomatoes with those beautiful olives. And then we'll add the fish. Oh, right. Just perfect. It. Really nice, right? It really is. And so those are about four to six ounces mm -hmm. per, would you do those one per person? One per person, okay. that's exactly right. So you see how gorgeous it looks just right on the plate. And then with your sauce, you can either put some right onto the plate, or if you have it in one of your little squeeze bottles, you can just squeeze it on top, or literally just, just put a little, a little dollop. dollop just right atop the fish. The flavors of the lemon, that Meyer lemon, go so beautifully with it. Well, and I love this sauce with the potatoes. Oh my gosh, it's great. Do you? I do. Well, how about if I put just a little, <laughs> little dollop of that right over here for you so that you can dive right into it. And that's really what I would do. I would serve some of the sauce to the side so that people can just really dive in. Actually, we could do a whole little move oh, right over here to the side. The Gotta have a little swoosh, right? And then go for some fresh cilantro, or if you use flat leaf parsley or basil, 
And rather than trying to chop this, instead, just throw it on, just the whole spray. Okay. So again, it's such a natural looking dish. Oh, you wanna is. just keep it that way and not get too crazy or too nutty with it. We have cilantro in the, in the sauce, so it's great to then pull out the fresh sprigs of cilantro right onto the dish. Very rustic. Which is what you want it to be. Again, yeah. it's a beautiful, beautiful salad. And there we go. And with the wine? With like the a wine. Pretty nice I right know. There. We still have a lemon. So if you wanted to, you know, keep going, you could put a few lemon slices right on top of the okay. fish. I mean, where do you go, right? You could also cut some lemon and put the fresh lemon around. Um, you can roast lemon. You could do a lot of things that just gives people that option to bring a little bit more into but play. But you really don't need it for the flavor because you have it in the sauce. Exactly. Yep. Yeah, at that point, it's just more for the the color and the wow mm -hmm. than anything else. Well, wow indeed. And I am gonna do one final look at this and put the Nicole cam down and come join you. So Please do. Can just enjoy it. I'm dying to hear how this turned out for those of you cooking at home. So please remember to post a picture of your meal so that we can see it. And you have a chance for that beautiful night. Yes, post your picture um, by March 31st so that we can get a glimpse and get you entered into the giveaway from Cutco. Ah, oh, here's to an amazing meal. Well, and really stress-free. You know, mm -hmm. we didn't talk much about a stress-free cooking zone. We usually do, but that's really what this is. I mean, if you look at the the whole stove top, everything was done on the pan. Yeah. So, with a few simple points of guidance, not rules, and maybe we should post those. Yes. I think that would be really great so that you'll see them on the on the cooking club website and we can work with, well with that. Yeah, and let us know if this is gonna kind of start you off on doing more sheet pan meals. I, I'm feeling that inspiration that I, I need to do more that's just a one pan wonder and, uh, and know it's done and then wash the pan and we're ready and to go. And we're good. It's really what we've done this entire season. Starting in January, we did a one pot chili and then last month we did a one pot pasta meal mm -hmm. that was all sauteed together, delicious. And then this time the sheet pan, we just really wanted to say cooking in a delicious and flavorful way doesn't have to be difficult. And mm -hmm. I think a lot of people have really loved that. Absolutely. And we love having you with us. You are why we do this. Thank you for joining us. We'll be back in April for another amazing meal and we'll get kicked off with our spring cooking. Yeah, so through spring, we're gonna be doing our classes on Thursday night. So our next one is April 11th, and we'll be excited to share with you just what we're cooking for the three months of spring. And spring started yesterday. I so know, on someone's birthday, so happy uh -huh. birthday to our chef. Yes, <laughs> and there's that, and there's that. Cheers to you, and bon appetit to you. Enjoy, and we can't wait to see you again.